بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي In the previous lectures we have discussed about the cross structure surface marking of the heart and uh, in that lectures we have discussed about the internal structure of the atria as well as the ventricles and we know that the atria they are connected with the ventricle through the orifices, atrioventricular orifices, one on the right side and one on the left side. And these orifices, they are guarded by the valves so that the blood should not flow back into the atria when the ventricle contracts. Similarly, when the ventricle contracts, the blood flows from the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk and from the left ventricle into the aorta and here also they are guarded by the valve mechanism that so that the during uh, diastole of the ventricles the blood should not flow back from pulmonary trunk into the uh, right ventricle or from the aorta into the left ventricle so today we are going to discuss about the ventricles of the heart and these ventricles, uh, the valves of the heart, these valves, they maintain the unidirectional flow of the blood and they prevent the, uh, the flow of blood in the opposite direction during the diastole of the ventricles. Two pairs of valves, one pair which is connecting, which is present at the atroventricular junction, one on the right side and one on the left side, a pair of atrioventricular valves, and a pair of valves between the right ventricle and the pulmonary, and between the left ventricle and the aorta, a pair of semilunar valves. And the gross feature shows that the right side atrioventricular valve has three cusp, that's it's named as bi tricuspid valve, while the left atrioventricular valve is bicuspid and is named as the mitral valve, having two cusps. Mitral cusps are smaller and thicker than the tricuspid while aortic and pulmonary semilunar valves have three semilunar cusps. So here are shown the valves of the heart. You can see here a valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle that is the tricuspid valve. And here the uh, valve between the uh, left atrium and the left ventricle here is the bicuspid valve, mitral valve. And here is shown the semilunar valve, aortic valve, between the aorta and the left ventricle. And here is pulmonary valve, which now we will see further details of this. Now valve here, tricuspid, mitral, then is the aortic and pulmonary. So first of all, briefly, the difference between the semilunar and atrioventricular valve is that the atrioventricular ventricular valves they are they have the uh, leaflet separate the they separate the atria from the ventricle, but they are uh, they they have three leaflet three cusps, but the semilunar valves they are they are cusp shape. So there is a difference. So it, this slide shows right AV tricuspid from between right atrium and right ventricle prevents back flow into the atrium. Left atrium ventricle bicuspid separates the left atrium from the left ventricle. Similarly, semilunar valves pulmonary separate the right ventricle from the pulmonary arteries, pulmonary trunk. Uh, prevents the backflow after ventricular contraction means ventricular diastole and aortic separate the left ventricle from the aorta prevents backflow 
after ventricular contraction. So first valve is the tricuspid valve. Here we can see this is tricuspid valve has been opened up to see the valve. It consists of orifice and is uh, and is associated with fibrous annulus the cusp. They are connected with the cordy tendon and papillary muscles. The circumference of this valve is 11.4 cm in the male, 10.8 uh, cm in the female, almost vertical but at 45 angle with the sagittal plane. And uh, the three cusps they can be distinguished and they can be named accordingly anterosperially, septally between the anterosperial, septal and the inferior cusp. Each cusp is a reduplication of endocardium and enclosing a cartilaginous core continues marginally on its vertical ventricular aspect with the diverging fascicle cord tendon. So these cusps are basically reduplication of endocardium and there is a fibrous element that is the collagenous core. So here we see the tricuspid valve. Here is the anterior cusp. This is the septal cusp because it is toward the interventricular septum and a posterior cusp or you can say inferior cusp. Here are the papillary muscles shown. Anterior papillary muscles, trabecular carni has been shown here. Posterior papillary muscles, septomarginal trabeculae or moderated band which we have seen during the structure of the right ventricle. And here are the septal papillary muscle. Right? And these cusps, they are attached to the skeleton of the heart, the fibrous ring. So here is the, these are the cordy tendony and here is the papillary muscle. So when the ventricle contracts, the blood flow, the the cordy tendony, they become tense by the papillary muscle. So they do, don't allow the reflex of the tricuspid valve to uh, go back into the atrium, preventing the regurgitation of the blood into the right atrium when the right ventricle contract. Then is the pulmonary valve between the right ventricle and the uh, pulmonary trunk is called the outflow of the trunk. Three seminal cusp here shown the three seminal cusp. Each cusp has a convex margin okay, and uh, attached to the fibrous ring. Here is a convex margin attached to the fibrous ring. There is a nodule here thickening of the connective tissue in the middle of free border of this. There is a free border and here is the nodule. And lunule uh, uh, is connective tissue free area in each, uh, on each side of the nodule. Here is connective tissue free area between there. Double layer of endocardium, same thing. And the pulmonary sinus is the uh, outward bulging of the wall of the pulmonary trunk opposite the valve. In, the, in that space. So here we see this is convex attachment of the pulmonary semi valve and this is a free margin. Here is a nodule of the uh, uh, you can see valve and here in between in the valve here will be the pulmonary sinus. Opposite the valve there is dilatation. Here shows the lunate a connective tissue between the cusp. So left cusp, anterior cusp, right cusp of the pulmonary valve. When the ventricle dies sleep, blood flows back into these cusps and they are filled and they become opposed to each other. 
so they don't need any cardiotensity after the muscles and uh, that's why there is no papillary muscle or cardiotensity it is the filling of these sinuses the the cusps which uh, which causes opposing of these valves and the valve closes during the ventricular dilatation here in the bigger diagram shown here the nodule then the between the connective tissue lateral to it peripheral to it is a the nodal is the right cusp is an anterior cusp and is a left cusp of the pulmonary valve same neural cusp and here is shown the pulmonary sinus this is dilatation or bulging of the wall of the pulmonary trunk see in this wall there is bulging outward bulging concave when you feel it and this is called as pulmonary sinus now is the mitral valve is smaller than the tricuspid valve 9 cm in males and 7.2 cm in females is shown the mitral valve smaller than, but thicker than the mitral valve, tricuspid valve is co-planted with the tricuspid or a fist but posterior superior to it is posterior and superior to the tricuspid valve now has two cusps anterior and posterior cusps and uh, the cusp they form a single zone of coaptation means a commissure and there are two cusps they will form a commissure the anterior cusp is uh, aortic septal or greater or intermedial cusp is uh, uh, form the one third of the circumference of the valve one third of it and the uh, uh, semicircular in shape or triangular with few or no margin uh, marginal indentations you will see here is the posterior cusp shown cordy tendon in papillary muscles and uh, here is the anterior cusp the anterior cusp is one third and the posterior cusp is from here to here one third and this will be more in the two third is the posterior cusp is ventricular or posterolateral entro this is intermedial and this is posterolateral Okay, and this has indentations also, vital cusp, more thicker than the anterior one. Here yes, shown again, mitral valve is the posterior papillary muscles, posterior cusps, anterior papillary muscles, anterior cusps. It is one third, and the posterior cusp is two third, and uh, the posterior is thicker. Than the okay. and this mitral valve has been shown. This body tendony similar as in the tricuspid valve. This valve lies coplanar with the tricuspid valve, but posteriorly and superiorly to the tricuspid valve. Posterior superiorly to the tricuspid. So, because uh, this valve is also between the left atrium and left ventricle, as the tricuspid valve is between the right atrium and the right ventricle, so both valves are atrium. We can compare these valves as well. Tricuspid having uh, three leaves, while my bicuspid having two leaves. It's mitral, it's tricuspid. Here will be anterior papillary muscle, similar papillary muscle, three papillary muscles in the right side, two papillary muscles on the left side. Okay, now is the aortic at the apex of the aortic vestibule, which developed from the which developed from the uh, bulbous cauda portion of the heart tube. And it is smooth one, so it is aortic vestibule. Three. One, two, three semilunar, that's two anterior side and one posterior side. 
so convex merge margin of the valves are attached to the here the convex margin attached to the fibrous ring of the orifice and concave margins are free these are these are free nodules and lunae are more prominent than the peritoneal orifice so here we see nodule and lunae they are more prominent than in the uh, pulmonary why because pulmonary valve has to resist a pressure of only 35 to 40 mm of mercury uh, and the uh, in, in, during the diastole uh, the diastole pressure of the uh, left ventricle is about 70 to 80 mm mercury means uh, means there is a difference of from 120 to uh, 80 is a 40 mm mercury so if here the force of pulling back the blood during diastole of the left ventricle is more than the pulmonary valve so the nature has developed more nodule thicker and even thicker than the pulmonary valve here shown here, this is the convex margin attached to the fibrous ring and this margin free margin on the free margin nodule and uni are present Similarly, here will be the dilatation of the aortic, va aortic wall opposite the valve. This will be the aortic sinus. It's only the bulging out of the valve, wall of the aorta opposite the valve that forms the aortic sinus. So, within this aortic sinus is, is originating uh, the coronary arteries. So, right coronary artery is the right cusp, is the, uh, the left coronary artery here, so, orig with, uh, originating within the aortic sinus. So, it means that one thing that the filling of the coronary arteries will be during diastole because when the blood will flow back into these sinuses during the ventricular diastole, then there will be filling of the sinuses and the, then the blood can flow into the coronary arteries. This is a very important point to note. So it says a fibrous nodule, midpoint of its free margin, thin connective tissue, lunae on the side of the nodule and these are thicker than the pulmonary, uh, pulmonary valve. And nodule and uh, lunules meet at the center. Obviously, they will meet at the center. So that we have understood about the uh, valves of the heart. So I repeat it again, showing the diagrams that we start with the valves of the heart, then having two pairs of valves, one pair is atrioventricular, other is a semi -lunar. And we have seen tricuspid, mitral, uh, pulmonary and aortic valves in this diagram and uh, the basic cordy tendon papillary muscles. Now the, here is the, again the valves that has been shown, the margins, they are attached to the fibrous skeleton heart, right, AV tricuspid left, AV bicuspid pulmonary and aortic seminal valves. So we have seen tricuspid three leaves, 11.4 centimeter males, 10.8 centimeter females, is, uh, they are located intro, superiorly, septally and inferior, inferiorly, the cusp the leaflets of the valve. Here we see again the tricuspid valve is an anterior one and the septal one then the posterior one. Septal here, posterior one. So, cordy tendony, papillary muscle, three papillary muscles, anterior, posterior and septo, septal papillary muscles are here. The additional band, septomarginal trabeculae, that is the moderator band has shown here and 
here, here the semen univalve, the permanent univalve has been shown also. This part is conus arteriosus or this part of the right ventricle which is infantibulum of the permanent trunk also developed from the bulbous cordus portion of the artery and is a smooth, there is a crest, supra uh, septum margin crest that separates the uh, permanent trunk from the uh, right ventricle. So, permanent valve 3 semilunar cuts has been shown and uh, the two uh, the, uh, the cusps are arranged in uh, uh, three seminal curves and with the nodule and lunate and uh, the uh, the free uh, the position of the cusp has been shown here this diagram we can see left cusp right cusp anterior cusp left right anterior cusp as shown here we have seen the nodule the pulmonary sinus here and uh, here again the nodule pulmonary sinus and this uh, this is the lunule this is the fibrous tissue nodule where the where they come come opposed to each other and they are very much close to each other left right and interior one mitral bicuspid two cusps posterior is thicker than the anterior one and uh, it's uh, anterior also called aortic septal or greater or an anteromedial the anterior one the posterior is also called as the mural ventricular smaller or posterior lateral Intermediate and postlateral. This uh, during the uh, mitral valve placement, uh, care has be, to be taken to take stitch on the anterior septal side because here we can damage the aortic, uh, the uh, atrioventricular node damage the conductive system of the heart that we will learn later on mitral valve has been shown here this anterior this is posterior one with the temporal muscles then the aortic valve similar three uh, the cusp semilunar cusp two anterior one posterior so it means anteromedial anterolateral one posterior and here shown the Coronary uh, origin of the coronary arteries from the aortic sinus, nodule, and neonule. Why the, do the heart goes, heart valves goes wrong? Heart valves can have three basic kind of problem: regurgitation, stenosis, and atresia. So a, a regurgitation means backflow, means the cusp they become uh, damaged, and the heart during the diastole, uh, during the contraction. Of the ventricle, the heart, uh, the blood goes back into the atria due to the damage uh, because of damage to the uh, atrioventricular wall. And uh, during the dilatation, uh, the heart will, uh, the blood will come back into the uh, ventricular chamber from the aorta and pulmonary valve um, due to the damage to the aort aortic and pulmonary valve, semilunar. Stenosis means the flaps are of a valve, they become thick and stiffen and fuse together. So, reducing the orifice through which the blood can flow in one direction means if there is aortic stenosis, then heart has to put more effort to push the blood out of the ventricle into the aorta due to a decrease in the orifice of the aortic vestibule, aortic valve. So that's a stenosis. Some valves can have both stenosis and backflow problem because the heart valve, heart valve become stiffened. So it, either it, it cannot close or it cannot open up properly. Atresia means if a heart valve lacks an opening for the blood to pass through. There is no valve at all at all so 
that can guard the flow of the blood. So next, what causes it? This the abnormal valve or well, congenital heart disease, this atresia, having rheumatic fever, cardiomyopathies, damage to the heart muscle from heart attacks, getting older, previous infection with endocarditis. These are the main causes which can cause the damage to the heart valves. Then is the fibrous skeleton of the heart. Fibrous skeleton. It is very important to understand the fibrous skeleton of the heart is a connective tissue, <coughs> connective tissue to which the valves and musculature firmly attach. It's a connective tissue here to which the valves and musculature is attached. This is the fibrous ring here. Also here. Also here. Four rings of cardiac skeleton surround the two atriventricular orifices and aortic orifice and opening of the pulmonary trunk. They are annulus fibrosis. Here you can see one, here is the second one, two, three, and four. The four rings inter the interconnecting area includes right fibrous trigone and left fibrous trigone. This is the area which connects between these rings, right trigone and left trigone. And they separate the atrial musculature from the ventricular musculature. This, this creates a barrier between the transmission of the pulse from the um, atria directly into the ventricle because of this fibrous skeleton because it separates the atria musculature from the ventricular musculature. A ring are joined to each other and to the membranous interventricular septum of the ventricle. So here we see four rings one, two, three, four four rings. This is for the mitral valve. This is the pulmonary. This is the pulmonary valve. This is aortic valve. This shows mitral and aortic. Here is the trigonal area, area present here left and here is the right one will be present on the right side. They are interconnected with each other through this trigonal area. So here is the membranous part of the membranous part of the ventricle. So this is shows the fibrous skeleton. To this skeleton will be attached the papillary muscles as well as the valves of the orifices. Okay. In this shape the uh, fibrous skeleton is present. Here again shows the fibrous skeleton. Here is the right. You can see fibrous trigon, left fibrous trigon. And here is the fibrous ring. Okay. Right fibrous ring, left fibrous ring. Then the uh, here is shown fibrous corners of the aortic valve and here is the fibrous corners of the pulmonary valve. So this the valves they are attached and the muscles of the ventricles are they are attached. So muscle fibers are anchored to the fibrous skeleton of the heart. This is a complex framework of dense collagen, dense collagen forming four fibrous rings and like fibrosis that surrounds the orifices of the valve, right and left fibrous trigon. Here is shown the right and left fibrous trigon, formed by the connective tissue between the rings and membranous part of interatrial and interventricular septum. Here is the membranous part of interventricular and interventricular septum. 
So again, keep the orifices of the AV and seminal wires patent and prevents them from being overly distended by an increased volume of blood pumping through them. So this fibrous skeleton, one function is this, that it keeps the valve in a competent in position and uh, prevents the overly distension by the pressure provides attachment for the leaflets and cusp of the valve. This ring will provide it. Provide attachment for the myocardium when uncoiled forms continuous ventricular myocardial band that originate primarily from the fibrin ring. So myocardial basically it's originating from the this fibrous skeleton. The uh, pulmonary valve and uh, ring of the uh, original primary from the ring of the pulmonary valve and inserts primarily into the fibrous ring of the aortic valve. So this sentence you should un understand very well that the myocardium, when you uncoil it, it will form a continuous ventricular myocardial band which is originating from the fibrous ring of pulmonary valve and inserts primarily into the fibrous ring of aortic valve. Okay, pulmonary from the pulmonary valve to the aortic valve. If uncoiled, if uncoiled, if open it up. Basically, we should remember that basically it is the site of attachment of the muscles of the uh, uh, heart, myocardium of the heart. Form an electrical insulator by separating the uh, myenterically conducted impulses from the atria to the ventricle. So it will form an insulator also, so that the pulse cannot travel directly from the atria to the ventricle to create a harmony uh, and uh, coordination between the atrial and ventricular contraction. Then it's a conductive system. So we have learned up to the fibrous skeleton of the heart. The next lecture, inshallah, we will discuss the conductive system and other system of the artery, arterial drainage and the venous uh, arterial supply and venous drainage of the heart. We will discuss later on.